Child, you want to be back? Of course, I'm exhausted. Um, very bad night last night. I couldn't get to sleep, and then I was dozing after I met and um, needed the loo part way through the night, so managed to get to the side of the bed. Too much information here, but managed to get to the side of the bed and sit on the side of the bed. When I went to get up, I couldn't, I was stuck. My back just completely froze. So I was stuck, as they say, between a rock and a hard place, or in this case, between the bed and being able to get to stand to go to the bathroom. So what happened was that I had a... Oh, gosh. They are like bellowing cattle, aren't they? Some of them. So what happened was I sort of leaked a bit onto the bed, so that had to be changed, and I had to be changed, and couldn't sleep. I just felt so depressed. I mean, I have an aversion to doctors and hospitals, a real aversion to them because of experiences that I've had. I count myself lucky on this occasion because they're going to be doing the vertebroplasty, which they promised me years ago they didn't do because they said that the bones had become so compressed there wasn't enough to um, do a vertebroplasty, enough room. So um, they're going to do the surgery on... Friday, and somebody mentioned, now I don't know the pronunciation of this word, uh, I should have looked it up, shouldn't I? A kythoplasty, something like that. Anyway, it's where, when there isn't enough room between the bones, they inject a sort of balloon into the cavity, a bit like a stent into the heart, I suppose. So they inject a balloon and then the cement is inserted into the balloon. Um, I'm not sure how long the procedure is going to take. Um, as far as I'm concerned, because I've got multiple fractures in my back. Um, it isn't just a fracture, multiple. And also the problems with the lumbar region. So I don't know how long it's going to take and how long the recuperation in hospital is going to be. I'm hoping it's going to be a day because um, I've got my sister-in-law staying with me. I've got um, and my, my her husband now and then. Um, and of course, my daughter and my sons, my daughter's just left and my grandson, they only live round the corner from me. So um, I've got no problem. And of course, I've got good friends also who will help out. So um, I'm hoping it's just going to be for the day. In the meantime, as I say, I'm reading... No, I'm not. I lie. I'm listening to the audio book, um, Diana, in her own words, which is interesting. I suppose my daughter just said to me, Mum, I bought you that book, and she did. She knows I'm not particularly a royalist and she tends to get me books on subjects that she thinks I won't like. One, one time it was um, this one that I'm reading now, listening to now. <laughs> then there was um, one about Fergie, who, you know, they're royals, aren't they? What, what are royals? They're just ordinary people. One about Fergie. And then there was another one about Anthea Turner, the perfect housewife, or oh my goodness, Stepford Wives. So she knows I won't read those books. 
And I said, you know, do you mind if I donate them somewhere? <laughs> so I'll probably do that. So I'm listening to that audio book and then I've got this. Let's see. It's called, let's see, The Evil Seed. And it's by Joanne Harris, who wrote the book. Um, about what was it two parts of the orange or something um oh she wrote the lollipop shoes um gentlemen and players i haven't read gentlemen and players i have read the lollipop shoes and that's a really good book i she's written quite a lot blackberry wine was another of her books I've read that. Chocolat. That's the one. Um, it's really a wonderful book. Just a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Evening drink coming round. So, yes, Joanne Harris. Is it Joanne or Joanna? Joanne Harris. Um, she wrote... Um, Five Quarters of the Orange, which is an excellent book. She wrote Chocolat, which I would really recommend to you. It was made into a film with Juliette Binoche, um, wonderful French actress. Was it? Yes, it was Juliette Binoche. Um, and it's set in a small town in rural France and this lady and her daughter open a feel-good shop where they make all sorts of chocolat, C-H-O-C-O-L-A-T, without the E on the end. Um, and it's sort of a, it's sort of a bar come cafe come takeaway shop set in rural France and it's such it is a delicious book as delicious as the title so I'd recommend that I'd also recommend Lollipop Shoes by Joanne Harris and Blackberry Wine what was the other one Five Quarters of the Orange that's an excellent book also so those are the ones I'd recommend to you but I think this I might be mistaken. I think this one might have been her debut book. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, she's also written a book called Rune Marks, um, set in... Um, well, medieval times, 500 years ago. So that might be something that you'd be interested in reading. So those are my recommendations. Um, I'm glad I come on for this little one-way chat tonight because after last night, my goodness, I've been feeling so terribly low. And, um, I mean, I've got everything... I want it to happen, it's going to happen. I'm having the surgery, I've got people to look after me. Um, I'll be going home, Alfie's been looked after exemplary, exemplary, in an exemplary way. So, no reason for me to feel down, but I do. Um, all the better for coming back on here tonight this evening and I'll come back on tomorrow pre-op and maybe just before I go down to surgery and then after I've had my surgery. Um, as I say, I don't know how prolonged it's going to be. Um, haven't read up on it really. Read a little bit but not much. So. As I say, thought for today, be glad it's not you in this hospital bed. 
<laughs> I think would be my thought for today. Um, anyway, I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Have a blessed night, everybody. Bye-bye.